almost that day of the year where I get goosebumps for a very different reason than for music or other things. It's one of the saddest things in modern history, one of the saddest, most brutal things that happened in the ex-Yugoslav region. It is one of the events that will prevent a Yugoslavia to happen ever again. Simply because the damage is that big, there is just generations of people who will not be able to forgive what happened on that day. That date, the 11th of July, 1995. 11th of July today, when that is remembered. It has to do with this. I don't know if you guys can see what it says on it. It looks like a green flower with like a white, white edge to say so. But it's has a way deeper meaning than that. So, what does it represent? These green, the green center are the dead Muslims to say so. Their coffins usually get wrapped in a green, um, green cloth to say so. It's the best way, the easiest way I can explain it to people who don't know what it is. And all these whites around are crying Muslim mothers who are bent over crying on their graves with the white um, scarf. This story is is so dark and there's so much so much stuff behind it which you 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 wouldn't believe unless you saw it. Before I want to show you the dark stuff behind it, I first want to show you what it is all about. And um, over the last, let's say two to three years, uh, the last five years, there's a lot of new information, a lot of new people and, and parties, sides involved, which um, got proven guilty by the International War, War Tribunal in uh, the, the Hague in the Netherlands. I'm gonna walk you guys through this, okay? So why is this such a sad day and what happened on that day? So I have two videos I want to show you guys. 6th of July 1995. Bosnian Serb forces begin their attack on Srebrenica. Are you so Srebrenica is a small enclave um, in, in northern Bosnia. It's uh, surrounded by basically all Serbian territory. And yeah, this is how Serbian territory attacked this enclave. When protected zone. The Blue Helmets, defending it at the time, number just 450 members. The Bosnian military had placed most of its weapons under UN control as part of a demilitarization agreement in 1993. A request to get them back is denied by the UN peacekeeping mission, UNPROFOR, which says it is responsible to defend the enclave. A Dutch battalion in Srebrenica requests NATO air support after the refugee camp and UN observation posts come under fire. But yes, this Dutch... Um UN battalion is called Dutch Bat and they were um, responsible for defending that area and for defending the enclave as well. The air support was there and the Dutch, um, I don't know what its exact function is, but let's say the leader of Dutch Bat in that region at the time basically denied it. He spoke to the French, he spoke to the Germans, he spoke to all the NATO airplanes and, and troops in the area. And they denied it on purpose. They didn't want to send it. This is, this has been confirmed by himself in national television. It was a big scandal a couple of years ago in the Netherlands. Um, he basically said he couldn't bear carrying this truth with him to say so. So he exposed what happened. And the Dutch bad, Dutch bad group, this group, um, has been, let's say, sentenced, uh, got proven guilty or involve, with the involvement of the people of the genocide that followed this. One of the reasons why Bosnians dislike Dutch people, dislike the UN, dislike Western Europe. Ever happens. 7th of July. The European Union's diplomatic mediator in the Balkans, Karl Bildt, meets Yugoslav President Slobodan Milosevic and General Ratko Mladic in Belgrade urging the Bosnian Serbs to refrain from military action and to negotiate a political solution. 8th of July. The Bosnian Serb army sees significant progress in their attack on the safe area of Srebrenica. The Dutch commander requests NATO close air support 
but it is once again denied. It's been reported that the UNPRO4 officials in Sarajevo and Zagreb believe the Bosnian Serb army did not intend to overrun the entire enclave. 9th of July 1995. The Bosnian Serb forces are four kilometers deep into the enclave and one kilometer from the town. Radovan Karadic issues a new order, giving the Drina Corps the green light to take the town of Srebrenica with the aim of the final disarmament of Muslim terrorists and the demilitarization of Srebrenica. 10th of July. With the Serb forces progressing, NATO airplanes begin circling the area where the fighting is taking place. This pushes the Serb forces to stop the firing. But NATO forces leave the area soon after. And they never dropped a bomb, just to make that entirely clear. They never took any action against this offensive. Bosnian Serb forces continue the attacks and are ready to enter the city the next day. The elderly, women and kids escape to the UN base of Portachari, while the mostly unarmed men try to escape to Tuzla, a city under the control of the Bosnian army, some 130 kilometers away from Srebrenica. And when I say, when they say try to escape uh, to 130 kilometers to Tuzla, I mean, they mean by foot through the hills and through the forest, not by car or vehicles or buses on foot. 11th of July, 1995. Miscommunication delays NATO close airstrikes by approximately three hours. Later, NATO planes drop two bombs and report that they were unable to locate the target. Bosnian Serb forces enter the town of Srebrenica. There was no miscommunications. The plane never came. And the Dutch bad commander confirmed that there were never those, those two bombs that they speak about in this video were never dropped. They never came. The planes were not even there, ever. Has been confirmed by the Dutch, uh, Dutch bad commander himself. 12th of July. Serb forces enter Portachari. Men are separated from women, kids and the elderly and taken to concentration camps. The execution of hundreds begins and some women... I won't show this part, I cut it out. Uh, what you see is basically men laying with their face down on the dirt floor, unarmed civilian men, which are being executed by um, Serbian forces, just shot one by one. July. Executions continue throughout the day until not one Muslim male in the former safe area of Srebrenica remains. They are either killed, kept in camps, or forced to flee the town. 14 so what they basically did, they just chucked a lot of men and people in, in, in big, let's say, old garages or old big buildings, um, closed the door, and then throwing grenades from the, from the windows and spray with machine guns through the windows to kill everyone in the room. 10th of July. As mass executions continue, international media starts reporting on the events and the UN Security Council, unaware of what is happening to the Bosnian men, meets again to discuss the situation. It doesn't address the killings. The first mass graves are dug up and put to use. 15 they basically dug massive holes with, ex with exca excavators, would line up people and just shoot them in big, one big pit and then the excavator would just cover it all up with dirt. 18th of July 1995. More Bosnian men are systematically executed, but Karl Bildt is still unaware of the situation and doesn't bring it up in a meeting with Milosevic and Mladic. The genocide continues until the 19th of July, leaving over 8,000 dead, thousands displaced, and an unknown number of women raped by the Bosnian Serb soldiers. He says he doesn't know about it, but um, I'm about to show you something really fucked up. It is said that because of the heavy losses and, and um, of the Bosnian army and because of the fact that they handed in a lot of weapons to the UN or UNPR, they did not have the firing capability, the striking capability uh, with their army anymore as they had, uh, let's say, a couple months earlier before giving in the, the weapons. 
um, that they were being driven back by the Serbs and the UN wasn't helping, as they said they would. It is speculated by the police chief and other big people from the Srebrenica enclave that before all of this happened, they were invited by Alijez Begovic, the president at the time, basically ask them if they would trade their town for the exit for the for let's say NATO support on the war against the Serbs. And I'm about to show you the clip of one of the police chiefs of Srebrenica and the witnesses from that meeting. So this has been confirmed, as in this has happened by witnesses, multiple witnesses, that the president basically asked them to sacrifice all these people for NATO support. And once you line that up with the fact that the airplanes never started bombing the times before when UN troops asked for it, it really looks like this enclave has been literally traded to show the international community how bad the Serbs are by letting them kill 8,000 people in order to then um, use NATO support to bomb Serbia in Belgrade and bomb also military targets in Bosnia. Um, and which also indirectly triggered the, uh, a huge advance from the Bosnian army through um, what is today's Republika Srpska. Republika Srpska would not be like not even a quarter that of the, this, the size that it has today um, if NATO then after all of this, when the Bosnian army started advancing like insanely fast to the last big city in the Republika Srpska, which is Banja Luka, which is now the capital of Republika Srpska. They were, I think it was 50 kilometers, the Bosnian army was 50 kilometers away from the city and they could easily have taken it. But then all of a sudden NATO said, no, 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 this was not part of our deal. We should bomb, we bombed the Serbian targets, but we never said that you as, as an army could um, do such a big counteroffensive on all the Serbian territory. So just when the Bosnian army and the, the Bosnian Croat army together conquered, let's say, 50% of the country, all of exactly, well, let's say around 50% of the country, exactly at that moment, NATO says, oh, hold on, you're not going to conquer Banja Luka or we're going to start bombing you as well. All of these things together make it look like such a setup. Like you cannot deny or say that I'm stupid regarding this because these are all facts lined up. And if you line them up together, this picture looks really messed up. But let me show you the pol what the police chief said. Perfect. 